school days with Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond has been writing for over 60 years and has now over 120 titles in print novels. Collections of stories, poetry, easies, anthologies and books for children. His first novel, The Room of the Roof, received the prestige John Lewin Reese Award in 1957. He has also received the Padma Sri 1999 and the Padma Vision 2014 and two awards from the Saitya Academy, one for his short stories and another for his writings for children. In 2012, the Delhi government gave him its Lifetime Achievement Award. Born in 1934, Ruskin Bond grew up in Jamnagar, Simla, New Delhi and Dehradun. Apart from three years in the UK, he has spent all his life in India and now lives in Mussoorie with his adopted family. A shy person, Ruskin says he likes being a writer because when I am writing, there's nobody watching me. Today it's hard to find a profession where you are not being watched. Part 1. The Four Feathers Our school dormitory was a very long room with about 30 beds. 15 on either side of the room. This was good for pillow fights. Class 5 would take on class 6 the two senior classes in our prep school and there would be plenty of space for lapping, struggling small boys, pillows flying, feathers flying until there was a cry of here comes Fishy or here comes Ollie and either Mr. Fisher, the headmaster or Mr. Oliver. The senior master would come striding in, can in hand to put an end to the general mayhem. Pillow fights were allowed. Up to a point, nobody got hurt. But parents sometimes complained if at the end of the term, a boy came home with a pillow devoid of cotton wool or Feathers. In that, at last year at Prep School in Simla, there were four of us who were close friends. Bimal, whose home was in Bombay. Riaz, who came from Lahore. Bran, who hailed from Bhelor. And your narrator, who lived whenever his father there in the Air Force was posted. We called ourselves the four feathers, the feathers signifying that we were companions in adventure, comrades in arms, and knights of the round table. Bimal adopted a peacock's feather as his emblem. He was always a bit showy. Ria chose a falcon's feathers. Although we couldn't find one, Bran and I were at first offered crows or murgi feathers. But we protested vigorously and attended a workout. Finally, I settled, settled for a parrot's feather, taken from Mrs. Fisher's pet parrot. And Bran found a woodpecker's which suited him as he was always knocking things about. Bimal was all thin legs and arms, so light and frisky that at times he seemed to be walking on air. We couldn't him Bombi after the declared little deer in the Disney film. Riaz on the other hand was a sturdy boy, good at games though not very studios, but always good, natured, always smiling. 
Bran was a dark, good-looking boy from the south. He was just a little spoiled, hated being given out in a cricket match and would refuse to leave the cricket Chris. But he was affectionate and a loyal friend. I was the scribe good at inventing stories in order to get out of scrapes but hopeless at sums. My highest marks being 22 out of 100 on Sunday afternoons. When there were no classes or organized games, we were allowed to roam about on the hillside below the school. The four feathers would lay about on the short summer grass, sharing the occasional food parcel from home, reading com comics, sometimes a book, and making plans for the long winter holidays. My father, who collected everything from scrums to shells to butterflies, had given me a butterfly net and urged me to try and catch a rare species which he said was found only near Chota Simla. He described it as a large purple butterfly with yellow and black borders on its wings. A purple emperor, I think it was called. As I wasn't very good at identifying butterflies, I would choose anything that happened to flit across the school grounds, usually ending up with common red, admirals, clouded yellows, or cabbage whites, but that purple emperor, that rare specimen being sought by collection dre world over proved elusive. I would have to seek my fortune in some other line of androver one day scrubbing about among the rocks and thorny bushes below the school I almost fell over a small bundle lying in the shed of a young screw tree. On taking a closer look, I described that the bundle was really a baby, wrapped up in a treated old blanket. Feathers, feathers, I called. Come here and look. A baby's been left here. The feathers joined me and we all started down at the infant, who was fast asleep. Who would leave a baby on the hillside? Asked Bimal of no one in particular. Someone who doesn't watch it, said Bran, and hope some good people would come along and keep it, said Riaz. A panther might have come along instead. I said, can't leave it here. Well, well, we will just have to adapt it, said Bimal. We can't adapt a baby, said Bran. Why not? We have to be married. We don't. Not us. You don't. The grown-ups who adopt babies. Well, we can't just leave it here for grown-ups to come along, I said. We don't even know if it's a boy or a girl, said Riaz. Makes on difference. A baby's a baby. Let's take it back to school and keep it in the dormitory. Of course not. Who's going to feed it? Babies need milk. We will hand it over to Mrs. Fisher. She doesn't have a baby. Maybe she doesn't want one. Look, it's beginning to cry. Let's hurry. Riaz picked up the wide awake and crying baby and gave it to Bimol, who gave it to Bran, who gave it to me. The four feathers marched up the hill to school with a very noisy baby.
Now it's done. Put it in the blanket. I complain and some of it's on my shirt. Never mind, said Bimal. It's in a good cause. You are a boy. Scout, remember. You are supposed to help people in distress. The headmaster and his wife were in their drawing room, enjoying their afternoon tea and cakes. We trod in, and Bimal announced, We have got something for Mrs. Fisher. Mrs. Fisher took one look at the bundle in my arms and let out a screech. What have you brought here? Born a baby man. I think it's a girl. Do you want to adopt it? Mrs. Fisher threw up his arms and constantly and turned to her husband. What are we to do? Frank? These boys are impossible. They have picked up someone's child. We will have to inform the police, said Mrs. Fisher, reaching for the telephone. We can't have lost babies in this school. Just then there was a common outside and a wild-eyed woman. Her clothes this helps enter at the front door accompanied by several men folk from one of the villages. She ran towards us, crying out, My baby, my baby, Mirabacha, you have stolen my baby. We found it on the hillside. I strung. That's right, said Brand. Find us keepers. With Adams, said Mr. Fisher, holding up his hand for order and addressing the villagers in a friendly manner. This boy found the baby alone on the hillside and brought it here before. Before, before the highness got it, I put in quite right bond. And why did you leave your child alone? He asked. The woman. I put her down for five minutes so that I could climb the plum tree and collect the plums. When I came down, the baby had gone, but I could hear it crying up on the hill. I called the main folk and we come looking for it. Well, here's your baby, I said, trusting it into her arms. By then, I was glad to be right of it. Look after it properly in future. Kidnapper, she screamed at me. Mr. Fisher succeeded in mollifying the blazers. These boys are good scout, he told them. It's their business to help people. Scout law number three said. I added to be useful and helpful. And then the headmaster turned the tables on the villagers. By the way, those palm trees belong to the school. So to do, do the peaches and apricot. Now I know why they have been disappearing so fast. The villagers a little present when they are away. Mr. Fisher reached for his can. From the way, he pondered it. I knew he was itching to use it on our bottoms. No prank, said Mrs. Fisher, intervening on our behalf. It was really very sweet of them to look after that baby. And look at Bond. He's got baby. Go all over his clothes. So he has go and take a bath. All of you. And what are you grinning about, Bond? Scout law number eight said. A scout smiles and whistles 
under all difficulties and so ended the first adventure of the four feathers